Hello everybody, here is Thomas Stünkel from commissioningcoach.com and today I want to introduce you to Peter Gilmore. I met Peter in Kuala Lumpur last week at the Marcus Evans conference for commissioning and startup and today Peter wants to give you a topic for commissioning training especially for punch listing. I have here a short bio from Peter. Peter graduated from Cambon School of Mines in Cornwall, UK and worked over 35 years in the mining and chemical industries in Zambia, Indonesia and throughout Australia. The first 14 years were spent in operating roles in concentrators and refineries before specializing in commissioning new plant and in 1993 establishing his own business servicing major projects with clients such as Rio Tinto, Mount Isa Mines, Western Mining Corporation, BHB, Billiton, Fortescue Metals Group, yeah? Yeah. Okay, Fortescue Metals Group. So, maybe you can add something to your bio, Peter? Yep. Thanks very much, Thomas. Uh, glad to be here. Yeah, I um, as a, a graduate from Campbell School of Mines, I uh, found myself working in Africa and was uh, very quickly drawn into commissioning new plants. It seemed everywhere I went, I was always involved in commissioning something. And so it went on for quite a while until a few people who I knew from engineering firms said I should actually go out and consult. And in the end, that's what I did. I decided that uh, I had had 14 years in the operating uh, arena and uh, decided to go out and specialize in commissioning services and that's what I do. So I now work for generally large firms mega on mega projects uh, such as Rio Tinto, Fortescue Metals, BHP, etc. and uh, get involved in, um, in delivering big projects. I enjoy it very much and uh, I found that there seems to be a requirement for uh, mentoring quite a few people on the commissioning process and I would be uh, happy to uh, undertake just one small part of this today, one thing which is very close to my heart and that is the punch listing process. Great. Uh, so your company is called uh, Fine Tuning Group, this is right, yeah? Yes, Fine Tuning Group, uh, based around I guess a, a bit of a joke and um, starting up a, a process and gradually tuning it so you get to the fine tuning stage when it's it's all balanced and operating in a steady state. Exactly. Okay, thank you very much. So then let's go on with the presentation. Hi, my name is Peter Gilmore from Fine Tuning Group and I'd like to present to you the punch listing process from a commissioning perspective. For an introduction the purpose of this presentation is to make all personnel aware of the punch listing process. And this includes defining requirements for how we control the walk down process, how we record the deficiencies, and the reporting of non conformances and outstanding rectification work of equipment. So, what is punch listing? The definition of punch listing is a deficiency management process involving the identification of deficiencies in and out of scope, categorization based around working safely and progressing completion in the most time efficient manner, and resolution on what will be done. Resolution of deficiencies. The resolution options are we could do nothing. We could just accept it as it is and live with the problem since the cost of rectification and the impact of deficiency on the functionality is minimal. The deficiency can be corrected during future maintenance outages when equipment is changed out. Second option is we could complete the work to design scope. Another option is to change the scope by adding or removing. And finally, to arrange for the deficiency to be addressed by the client, transferring the accountability to the client from the project. Identification. When we identify deficiencies, we need to provide a clear explanation. We specify the location, 
in the descriptor of the deficiency and we field mark the item to assist location by the rectification team. We could add a piece of tape, a piece of colored survey tape to a handrail or to a piece of structure to show somebody and we could write on that uh, the deficiency number so that people can understand that it's that valve or it's this that we're talking about. We could start the description with an action such as relocate something or paint something or install, tighten up, rotate. We need to categorize the deficiencies and they're categorized as follows. Category A, which needs to be addressed before we energize uh, the equipment. Category B, before the commencement of bringing process into play. And category C, before the end of the project. Finally, we have a category D, which is out of scope and it's requiring further funding and approval. Also add a class, and the class refers to witnessing the completion for the clearance of deficiencies and is designated as follows. Class one can be signed off by the project, the EPCM, and class two requires the client sign off. And this is where, it's not very often this happens, but it's, it's where the client has a particular concern about an item and wants to visually cite it before signing it off and accepting it. Typically, class one is the, is the usual, and that is the majority of the deficiencies would just be signed off by the EPCM. So the objective of the walk down is one, the validation of scope, and it's necessary for a successful progression of handovers and project closures. And it's also the conform confirmation of quality, where we ensure that equipment is installed in accordance with the plant design and is in a condition to operate safely and reliably. The punch this walk down process. Very simply, as a check sheet, we invite the required attendees to the walk down. We meet at the designated point. We define the scope of the walk down. We use drawings marked up with highlighters and an explanation that we're going to look at this conveyor but not that conveyor. So it's a matter of being able to define because what the scope of the work is because there might be some construction going on at the same time as we are walking this piece of equipment down. We conduct the walk down inspection. During the walk down, we record any deficiencies onto the punch list entry form. And after we've completed the walk down, we return to, it, to the designated meeting point where we discuss the deficiencies and then categorize and assign the class. After the deficiency categorization and class has been assigned, we sign off the punch list entry form, it's signed off by all of the stakeholders to ensure that there is that it's a true entry and it prevents other people from entering things or disputing things that people have signed off before. We provide copies immediately to the contractor to commence rectification of the work, and then we close the meeting. In our observations, we inspect for completeness, quality, safe operability, and maintainability. The representation of the team walking down, the formal punch listing of the equipment will involve the nominated representatives of the installation contractor, they're going to do the work, so they need to see what we're talking about. The EPCM construction, EPCM engineering, EPCM commissioning. And also the client owners team, those the people who are managing the EPCM on behalf of the client operator. And because it's a formal walk down, we have the client operator there as their one and only chance to have a look at the scope and come up with any issues or concerns that they might have. Usually this can be quickly resolved by discussion about what is in and what is outside the scope. After we finish, there's always a feeling that people might say that, ah, oh, 
I want to add everything to the punch list because it's my one and only chance to say something. So did you miss something? The scope deficiencies discovered after the walkdown can be added to the punch list database pending discussion and with the approval of the construction and commission managers. The deficiency is recorded on a punch list entry form and requires approval prior to entry into the punch list database. This way, if things have been missed or something arises, then it can be added to everybody's satisfaction. This is a picture of a punch list entry form. It has the area manager representative from the EPCM, the construction representative, the commissioning representative, and the operations representative. And it's, and it's important to understand that A category items are a result of having its outstanding scope and they have to be completed before energization. If a item wants to go to a B category, then it requires the commissioning representative to sign off and accept that. And if an item is going to be a C category item, it will require the operations representative to sign that. Basically, the form lists all of the uh, a description, the number, the description of the defect, who raised it, what category, what class, when it's due to be completed, and the responsibility for it. We also tick whether it's a mechanical punch list or whether it's electrical. Generally, we do not mix the two. We have a separate walk down for mechanical and a separate walk down for electrical. We also list the area, the subsystem number, the subs system number, the subsystem number in the description, and the supervisor accountable for the work. And just a summary, a single formal walk down by discipline mechanical and electrical. We need to advise up to seven days notice for participants to attend. Some people might not be on site and will have to travel to the site and would need time to book travel. We need to have pre and punch list, pre and post punch list meetings. The deficiencies are identified and agreed by the punch list team. And the clearance by responsible person on or before the due date. And the punch list is managed by a completions management system database. Okay, Peter, this was really impressive. Thank you for this uh, presentation. For me, it was new, uh, this uh, class. I didn't use it before in, in my uh, punch listing meetings. Can you explain this a little bit more? Sure, thanks, Thomas. Yeah, the purpose of the class is it's almost like uh, an inspection and test plan where you have a witness hold point. That means the person marks the plan up and says, quite happy for these things to occur, but I want to be able to witness this as client representative. In the same way in the punch list, we do we have a class there which enables the client, if they have a particular item or type of deficiency that they want to witness themselves, because I'll give you an example, um, maybe the greasing of remote grease lines. Uh, one client I had where on the whole project, nobody had bothered to purge the grease lines and fill the remote grease lines up. So the equipment People would come and, and grease into the remote lines, which were maybe two, three meters, and there was no grease in there to allow a hydraulic purge. In other words, as the time went on, the, the, the actual bearings received no grease because there was this air gap in between the remote lines. So the client particularly wanted to actually inspect all of these points personally on future projects. So that is a good example of how we would use the class. We don't encourage as a project team for the client to witness every single deficiency, but there are some items that it makes them feel more comfortable and it generates a confidence by allowing that type of um, personal witness to be included. Okay, thank you. Um... You mentioned uh, you should invite the 
involved parties seven days before the punch listing and <laughs> I can only agree yeah because sometimes it's really difficult to get all involved parties together at this place at this certain time yeah is this your experience as well very much so in fact as the site team gets established it's quite possible that, that seven days notice will actually be reduced to about three or four days uh, by a mutual agreement but generally, in the early instances, especially with big projects, people are flying in from different cities or different areas to, or, or traveling to the site. And they don't, for lots of reasons, maybe accommodation restrictions, they can't remain on site or it's not part of their job. Especially from the client point of view where they are there just to walk down and witness and be part of that formal punch this walk down, they wouldn't normally be on site. And so it may be a specialist that you're bringing in to be in attendance. And that's why as much notice as possible is just a courtesy factor. One last question, Peter. Um, you uh, showed the punch list template. Uh, I think a lot of people would like to to get this as well. Would you share this punch uh, te list template on our website? Sure, of course. Yes, it's Great. So simple. Yeah. Thank you very much, Peter. And I hope to get you on board again for the next session. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.